Hey everybody, Steve Hansen here with the janitorialstore.com. Say, I did a video on um, you know how many, how much cleaning the supervisors do versus uh, their supervising, and uh, this is kind of this is the what I actually used the chart uh, to where we started off to where they're doing 80% cleaning and 20% supervising, and as we continue to, to bring on more accounts, more more team members, uh, we reduce their cleaning and increase their supervisor skill uh, supervising, to where eventually we had it at 100%. Now, one thing that we need to do is that we need to make sure that we have, uh, you know, the right, uh, the right, uh, uh, the right span. Uh, and um, when we talk about span, you know, we don't want to load the supervisor up on uh, on a wide span, meaning that they've they've got a, a lot of people to manage. And in some cases, they're they're trying to manage too many people, which affects their performance and the team's performance. You know, so that's what we have to watch that. Uh, so you have a wide span, you got a narrow span. The narrow span is where a, a supervisor may be only supervising, you know, four or five people, which, you know, which is good, you know, and they all have their, their pros and cons. Um, but, you know, with a narrow span, that means that they're only supervising five people, uh, means that they can spend more attention and spend, spend more attention to those five team members. Uh, but, you know, the, the downside of that is that uh, you know uh, uh, it gets more expensive, so you know you have to keep that in mind. But you know when you're using a, a wide span, that means that the supervisor is actually uh, supervising a, a larger amount of team members, you know, 10, 15, 20 team members. So you know that's that's kind of great too, but uh, you know it, it's it's more cost effective to do that. Um, but uh, one of the downsides that I had that uh, that it uh, leads to for the supervisor to become overloaded, and that's more common than what you think, um, especially with some of these larger companies that, that I talk with. Uh, you know, they may have a supervisor that's uh, supervising 50, 60 people. Well, you know, that's a lot of people to supervise. You know, that's a lot of accounts to, uh, to possibly supervise too. But in either case, that's a lot of people to manage, and they, they get overwhelmed. Uh, they drop the ball on various things, uh, and so I think that they're they're you know they're they're trying to overmanage, and that's actually the, the company's the company's problem uh, that they're putting that workload on that supervisor. You know, um, as you develop your supervisor, a good thing to do is using the scale back to you know uh, work versus supervising. If the supervisor is just at the beginning stage, and here they're they're cleaning 80 percent, they're supervising 20 percent, they may be only supervising one or two team members at that point. So you know that's that's a manageable uh, that's a manageable uh, uh, percentage. Uh, as we continue to grow and build and, and pick up more accounts and add more team members, uh, when a person's down here at 50 uh, percent cleaning and 50 percent supervising, maybe they're supervising six to seven people. You know, so again, it's still manageable. Uh, they're not, you know, we're, we're allowing them the time that they need to be able to supervise people correctly and efficiently. Uh, as we continue to grow, and let's say we get down here to where, to where we're at, uh, they're cleaning 20% of the time, and then supervising 80% of the time. They may have 12 to 13 team members, you know, that they're that they're uh, supervising. Again, we want to keep that ratio, you know, within balance so they can manage effectively and efficiently. That's really the key. So once we get to where they're doing no, no cleaning at all and 100% supervision, they may have 16 to 20 team members that they're managing. And at that level, you know, that's when they, uh, that's when they should be able to have their systems in place, their super, supervisor systems, to be able to continue to manage uh, effectively and efficiently. And that's really what it's all about. Uh, once they get to that level to where they're managing 16 to 20 people, um, you know, you got to make sure that they're documenting their systems. And in fact, those systems should have been uh, produced already, you know, before they even get to this level. Uh, that's something you have to remember. You know, uh, I often train or teach uh, my coaching clients that, you know, in order to put in their uh, ultimate business system, they got to build these systems. And one of the systems is your supervisor system. And uh, remember that they don't have to do it alone. They have a supervisor that can help them. The supervisor is doing it day after day, after day, day after, you know, and so get them involved with it.
and have them help write your write your system for supervising various size teams and how how this whole changes throughout the process. Because you have to remember when when we start here at the beginning, you know maybe we're maybe we're at three hundred thousand dollars. You know uh, we're just where we just hired a couple of people, so we're probably doing two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Um, you know so. That's when the process should start, especially when, when you have when you, well when you start uh, when you start uh, bringing on a supervisor, I should say, um, and uh, then as we continue to grow the business, the system is going to change. It it has to because it has to, it has to uh, it'll grow along with the business. So always keep that in mind. But anyway, the bottom line is to make sure that you have a good balance between uh, if they're cleaning and supervising and, uh, and how many team members are actually supervising. Uh, that's very, very important, you know, because you definitely don't want to get some crazy number where they're cleaning 60% and 70% uh, supervising and they're trying to uh, manage 10 team members. Uh, you, that's a, just a, a, a recipe for disaster, really. So try not to do that. Try to keep a balance. Um, after all, you know, the, the, their job, the supervisor's job, is to make sure that you get no complaints from the client. Quality control is at its, at its top, you know, it meets all the company standards and the client standards. And that the uh, employees are, are efficient and uh, the employees are, are learning, uh, you know, they're uh, learning their task and, and, their, uh, and uh, the, the, the things that they perform uh, to make their job easier uh, so they're on, getting ongoing training and so on and so forth. But, Anyway, that's the key. Make sure you have a, a good balance, and uh, hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, you know, many times I have people ask me, "Well, how many people, you know, what a supervisor manage, and so on and so forth." Well, this is this is you can use this now uh, to to arrive at that number. So, uh, if you if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, uh, and and please share it with others. And remember to check the comments down below because I always leave some link or some uh, uh, document or something, some more information down there. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you again.